Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see so many of you out there in the audience. In this session, we're going to discuss um, how on earth you can get competitive advantage for start from starting to use renewable fuel. Well, the key issue is that renewable fuel is much, much more expensive. It's two to three times more expensive. So how do you get competitive advantage from that? And we have a panel here of different participants. We have Heike Helsten from SSAB. SSAB Hello. is in focusing very much on eliminating all emissions from their production, from their entire supply chain. We have Harri Tamminen and Minna Tuorila from Viking Line. Harri representing the cargo side and Minna sales and marketing. And uh, if it's okay, I'm thinking of you, Harri as cargo, you as passengers. Yes. Good. <laughs> And then if we go continue in the value chain, we have Staffan Sandblom from Fortum. Staffan is in charge of developing the new strategy or, and implementing the for synthetic renewable fuels, which is basically a completely new industry. It's a huge industry. Then we have Mika Laurilehto from Rauma Marine oh. Constructions that, uh, well, you build ships. We will see. Especially <laughs> these kind of very advanced, energy efficient <coughs> um, row pack ships, or sort of row row passenger ships, like the kind that Viking Line operates. And then last, but definitely not least, uh, Riku Mäkelä from Business Finland. Now, of course, Business Finland has a really central role in getting things like these going, where Finland can have a competitive advantage. My name is Magnus Gustafsson. I am research leader in industrial management at Obo Academy. I'm also a partner at PBI Research Institute, which is a consulting company. I'm going to start with you, Heikki, okay. uh, because we, we, over the years we've been discussing the fact that, you, that, as said, SSAB is reducing its emissions, and you are interested in getting out also, or you could say even responsible for getting out the emissions from transport. Could you explain to us why you are interested in purchasing transport, which is more expensive? Well... Let's put it this way, that if I'm not mistaken, so in general, we are generating 40 to 50 gigatons. That's not million tons, that's billion tons of CO2 emission in the world at the moment. And everybody who studies deeper in this subject knows, knows what that is doing to the climate. And maybe not us oldies, but uh, uh, the new generation is very much aware of the fact that something has to be done. Now at SSAB, we are focusing on getting, uh, starting to produce our fossil-free steel. So, so getting away, getting rid of uh, emissions totally. This will begin now uh, in large scale in 2026 in our Oxalison meal in Sweden. But uh, till 2030, all our production will be converted to be totally fossil-free. And this then, of course, uh, gives a lot of pressure to our logistics. Uh, we have committed in First Movers Coalition uh, to, to a target that uh, at least 30% of our truck transportation has to be acquired from uh, uh, zero emission sources uh, by 2030 as well. But in an increasing matter, we also get the pressure from our customers. They no longer accept, uh, accept the, the uh, transportation and the last mile delivery done by by fossil trucks if, if there's a possibility to do something else. So, so both. We want to save the world, and then there's this uh, pressure from the customers. Exactly. So you, want, you, really, you really need this to uh, get this competitive advantage. Yes, definitely. We, yeah. uh, even some of the customers are nowadays stating and presenting us with a requirement that uh, they no longer accept uh, the deliveries uh, other than totally fossil-free, emission-free. So, so this is a must, and this is something that we have to find a solution to at the end of the day. And yet, yet when I'm saying this, I, I mean that, okay, there might be a margin at some point that we have to pay. Uh, for example, in the beginning, when we are uh, uh, creating the solutions, so in the first phase. But I'm saying also that we have this hope, and we have this uh, vision in our head that uh, transportation can be both... Uh, uh, emission-free and and also economically viable. Okay, and there actually, Harry. I mean, how do you <laughs> how do you respond to this? I mean, this now. I mean, there is uh, there is a demand now. Heike is not your direct customer, he's the, but he is at the end of the day the one who will pay for this, and who and who is demanding 
Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, hopefully he will pay. <laughs> <laughs> or his client will pay right. for the premium for the transport. <coughs> uh, we have at Viking Line and most likely in other, other shipping companies as well, uh, experienced the generation ch change from before everybody, everybody was talking about uh, to be reporting the CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. But that's not enough anymore. They want to take the next step. They want to go further. They want to go to zero. They want mm -hmm. to have the reality, not just only reporting figures. Mm -hmm. Now we have to find a solution for uh, emission-free transport, mm -hmm. even to the sea. And that's what we are, we have done mm -hmm. uh, with Viking Line. And uh, we will implement that even for the freight transports as of next week. So we will be offering, even for the truck companies, Hake is using hopefully, uh, possibility on uh, going down in emissions by using us uh, between uh, Turku and uh, Stockholm. From what I understand, I mean, your <laughs> ships on the Turku-Stockholm route, they are LNG ships, which means that uh, biogas, LBG, is a drop-in fuel. And from what, what I understand, uh, your competitors, it's for them, such a similar drop-in fuel is not necessarily available. Do you see that you could get a competitive advantage here? Yeah, let's, let's hope so, but that's not the only, only factor playing the role. Of course, so environmental friendly transport is the key okay. issue here. But of course, we will get a competitive advantage uh, towards the other competitors on the route. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have LNG uh, powered vessels. And yes, it's a drop in uh, fuel, which we will be mixing with an uh, LNG, LBG and LNG can be used at the uh, same time in the engine. And that's what we will be doing. That's what we are doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Passengers are sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> have, to say, have to say this. Uh, they started already in in midsummer week offering mm. for the passengers, and uh, as far as I know, we've been uh, fueling uh, LBG already oh. uh, on certain uh, voyages, and because the demand is there for the passenger side. Now we start on the freight side next week, and uh, let's let's hope it will uh, yeah explode. Hopefully, Hake, hope. Hake yeah. is, now I have to know how many tons <laughs> Hake is transporting, so I have to be calculating then. Okay, my well, Hake's products are quite yeah. heavy, so... Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, but, but yes, unfortunately, it is expensive for the time being, I admit that. <coughs> but everything, every new thing usually is expensive at the beginning. Precisely. Really. Yeah, so let's hope it will come down. Minna, um, in a way... Um, your situation is a bit more complicated. Because, I mean, uh, Harry, he can, he can turn to big end customers like Heike and like that. You, you, you really can't. There aren't any big customers. How do you approach this on the passenger side? And well, who, should you, who are the partners? How do you do this? Well, um, it's, it's a matter of marketing, of course, and communication to, to our, our mm -hmm. direct clients. Uh, we do that on our web website, so, so we, we present the, the possibility to, to pay extra for the bio, uh, biofuel. And, and of course, we, we, start, we had some technical problems in, in presenting it in our website, uh, but now, now it should be functioning much better. And, and we start to uh, communicate that to, to, to the customers, also in the pre-email pre letters that we sent before the trip. So if you missed it while you were booking the trip, so then you can get the information that you can, you can uh, pay, pay a, an extra fee for the, the non-emission uh, trip to, to Stockholm from Turku. So, in, in, I mean, to me it sounds like you're looking, you see it as simple hardcore marketing and communication work <coughs> that needs to be done. Mo mostly communication. I, I, yeah. I don't call that probably marketing because... Um, it, it's a real fact. I'm like every, everybody wants to save the world, but but we we live from the Baltic Sea and 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 we want that to be in a good good shape. And and our clients, well, we made a oh, well. There has been a stud, lots of studies. Uh, two thirds of the of the passengers are willing to pay for for non-emission travel, and 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 we hope that we will find them to mm -hmm. travel in our our vessels. I could hear 
quickly inter just interject here and show that say that I actually uh, to be together with my wife in the beginning of August we traveled uh, on Viking Line and when we checked in I asked that can I pay this surcharge and the, she and the, the lady at the, in the check-in said sure and then I paid it it was four euros for per person but we had a car with us as well so uh, do you see that you could be getting competitive advantage for example uh, like grow your market share by with this offering that that's what i that's what we are aiming to because that's i hope that it will because there's a lot of trend, new trends uh, people want to travel mm -hmm. but they still want to travel uh, in a sustainable way and and there was you know the same study who said that two thirds will are, are willing to pay a little bit extra one only th 3% of all the passengers, they, they are willing to cut down of their travel, but they want to travel a little bit more sustainable way. So I'm sure that, that you know, when you make the choice, you, you see a little bit that, that how much emission or, or what can you do f to, to travel in a, in a smarter way. Exactly. So what you're saying here is that you don't need to cut down travel. It is possible to travel sustainably. It is possible to ship things sustainable. We don't basically have to shut down society. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. Staffan, yes. uh, the business line you're responsible is quite uh, sort of the, 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 the example Viking line is setting here. Mm -hmm. they, they are sort of important. That kind of forerunner, I suppose, is quite important for... Abs absolutely. Um, because, of course, for us to be able to build uh, a plant making bio biofuels is, is outside of our scope so it's e-fuels in our case and an e-fuels plant in that case is several hundred million euros in investment it's huge uh, investments up front and it's very difficult to scale easily i mean it's not easy to scale up with a small and then a medium sized it's rather pilot first on very small mm -hmm. scale and then go directly to the very big scale uh, which means, of course, that there needs to be a risk sharing, and there's a lot of of that kind of thing. And their Viking line is is really a forerunner, I would say, um, and in, in how to how to do that. Because also, what's good with Viking line in this case, if we talk about Viking line specifically, is that they're um, you as a company are really aware of. So what would what would be the costs? What are our margins? And open with that from the start, and that simplifies things a lot because then you know which what which which playing field you're in, and that's important uh, because this this is going to be a rough ride to get there. There's going to be failed projects. There's going to be uh, a lot started, less continued and finished. But we have to do it. It must yeah. be done for for the as you said for the climate. It just has to be done somehow. And I think when we talk about big scale here, it's for some for the audience. I think it's important that we can bring up that both for you and for SSAB, big scale means that it easily goes up into billions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, so, yes. Yeah. So it's it's enormous projects, the kind of projects that you work with once in a lifetime. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mika? I mean, you've been uh, focusing on this as well, and and you, you have a. Focus, especially you have highly advanced energy efficient ships and from what I understand you've already sold a couple of ships based on the idea that you, that, that you can have sustainable travel and transport. Yeah, that, that, that is correct. We, we are, the, the ones that we have delivered actually as RMC Rauma Marine Constructors and the predecessors in Rauma, the ship builders, that has always been the case that we want to be in the fore, fore of the, of the uh, technology technological development and of course in the in the past I would say decade the, the driver has been environment and and how to how to bring down the emissions from from vessels uh, the the business as such I mean shipping shipping is relatively traditional and and if you look at what 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 is happening now I mean this is this is and we are talking about investments which are hundreds of millions or even billions. <clears throat> so how, how to make the right decision now for the next 30 mm -hmm. years? This is the big big question and this is what we are talking about with, with our, our clients because definitely we also want to save the world and there is definitely the pressure from the clients but to find the right the solution which, which will be viable for the next mm -hmm. two, three decades, that, that, that's Quickly, the big question. But I believe, uh, 
Wasn't it so that the, 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 the two ships that you sold to Tasmania, which is uh, several hundred millions apiece, that sustainability was a key uh, it is, decision it, point? It is, yeah. So we, we are producing not only for the Baltic area, but we, we have clients globally. And, and this is not, of course, not an issue only here in, 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 in the Baltic area, but that's a global issue. And uh, you're right, Magnus, that one of the drivers for the Tasmanians and Australians to come, come to Rauma for, the, for building the ship was the, was the fact that we, we are, we have been delivering successfully ships that are, are environmentally sound, so to speak, and of course discussed a lot about the solution for their vessel. Uh, it's a ferry with, which is a lifeline between Tasmania and Australia, and uh, of course, again, an uh, investment for 30 years and the, the local people definitely want to see that in the future they would be able to use locally produced fuel. So, for example, e-fuel, e e, e mm. methane, the vessel we are building, or two vessels, they are both uh, equipped with um, multi-fuel engines, so they can, as the main fuel, they can burn uh, today fossil uh, methane, so, so liquefied natural gas, but of course it could be replaced easily with, with biogas or then, then <coughs> synthetic fuels. Hey, you had a comment. Yeah, I just had a comment that many sea carriers approach us you know, frequently and they ask that what kind of technology would we like to have on the vessels, but we know how to produce steel and our answer is that they're cheap and pure, <laughs> but we don't know the technology that should be there. But I understand the uh, phenomenon here. Uh, it's difficult. The investment is so long-lasting, mm -hmm. and it's now, now they have to make a decision, and it's, it's difficult to say probably what, what the right solution should be. Yeah, precisely. Well, it's a, it's a, it's like a, in a way, there's a huge chicken and egg problem because the, there has to be a connection at the end of the day through your from, starting from your customers, going all the way back to Stefan and Mika. Through Viking Line. Exactly. We, we are talking about sea transportation here, but we can see the similar effect on, for example, electrical trucks. Yeah. Uh, the truck producers are saying that uh, we, we can produce the trucks, but then they say that please provide the charging infrastructure. And then the infrastructure people are saying that we can do that, but there are no trucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Somebody has to go first. Yeah. I mean, th this, this was exactly the case with uh, LNG, that it's taken... 20 years for the marine industry shipping to, to go to, to LNG as a fuel. The technology has been there for a long time, but the infrastructure, legislation, rules, regulation, safety things, it, it takes quite a lot of time. And now, now we are in, in, in that era where we... But now we uh, don't have the 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, precisely, we don't have 20 years. And yeah, uh, that's sort right. of, I mean, the, the problem needs to be solved quickly, but also... There's also the business angle that uh, the possibility of getting first mover advantage here. So, Riku, I mean, we're looking now at a huge chicken and egg problem with significant opportunities, uh, global opportunities here. I mean, uh, so uh, uh, from your point of view at Business Finland, how do you see that? How can we, what, what should we do so that we don't lose the momentum that we sort of no matter how small the momentum is that uh, Har and Min are representing, that nevertheless we have momentum here now. Thank you for a good question. So basically I represent governmental organization and we have certain mandates where we operate and support the Finnish economy and the future of Finnish economy. And if I start from why, so mm -hmm. why we are discussing here is that we have a burning platform, which is the climate change. And then we have all thought about sustainability for a long time. And now we have decided globally to focus on carbon emissions and decarbonizing all the, in, all the industries, mm -hmm. transportation and everything, because we just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we cannot survive here on the planet. Precisely. So there's huge demand for that. And then when we look at decarbonization, maritime transportation has a crucial role. 80% of uh, logistics globally uh, travel on water. And then 100,000 ships, they use, was it 300 million tons of fossil fuels a year, mm. huge numbers. Mm. So when we are changing that, it has to happen fast. We cannot wait 20 years for <coughs> first methanol ships to be bunkered at the ports and so on. So mm. we have to speed up that. Mm. And then Business Finland, we have several ways in helping in the speeding up the transition. One of that is kind of bringing organizations together, 
everybody here <laughs> on stage and many others for joint projects where they do studies, they innovate together, figure out how to do something. And one of the low-hanging fruits is green corridors, point-to-point mm. -point or from one point and back type of C routes where you can maybe easier bring everybody together and agree on cost-sharing model and profit-sharing model and who builds what and how. So that's one way of speeding it up. Uh, precisely. And here is an interesting thing because... Uh, the, in a way, listening here, I mean, oh, yes, stuff on your plants aren't up and running yet, but but the so the, tec the technology exists, the ships exist, uh, the demand it kind of sort of it really comes down to sort of finding the business model, getting the cost sharing model. I mean, you guys know the difficulty in finding the cost sharing and <laughs> or rather cost <laughs> dividing model among you. <laughs> that's, Hurry. that's why there's the room between. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really agreeing this one, but yeah, let's not talk about that. But. Uh, <laughs> You want to trade places? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the green corridor thinking—it's—it's uh, it's a vital. I, I would say that we started thinking this way already in 2013 when we uh, launched uh, the first LNG vessel, hmm. or actually years before that, because as you said, no infra was at the present time yeah. uh, available. Together with the subcontractor, hmm. we built it in Sweden, yeah. so we could bunker. So it's the first step. It took 10 years for us to go from LNG to LBG. Yeah. And now we're offering the LBG. So we don't have the 20 years. It took 10 years for us as a private company to yeah. do this change. We need to speed up the work. Uh, Heike is coming 26, demanding his transport. I, I believe that all his volumes could fill my ship or our ships mm. easily. But there are a lot, lot more. Mm. The, the consumers are demanding environmental friendly solutions. Mm. So the corridor needs to be taken seriously. And one shipping line is a good start. Mm. But we need to think about the corridor thinking. Uh, we're happy to be first. and We love to be the first one. And uh, we're trying to get the advantage of it. Mm. But we will not stop there. Stefan and then Heike. Yeah, um, I think two things I think that are really important also is, is from the state side, the regulation, mm -hmm. which is now a moving target. Yeah. We don't know which carbon sources will be sustainable carbon sources according to the legislation, mm -hmm. uh, which mean, doesn't mean that they're sustainable or not sustainable sort of for real. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a mismatch there. Um, we don't know where this will go, mm -hmm. which means you have to take a huge risk when choosing a carbon source to use. Uh, that's one one thing. So, so stable conditions and stable understanding that's fact based is really really <coughs> important. Um, that's not quite there, I would say, from the political side at the moment. Mm. Uh, in in the EU specifically, then um, because it's driven more centrally from Brussels than than locally at the moment. And then also the same thing on the technology choices. We have to make a technology choice now. Mm. Just and so do you. Yeah. Um, that will have to last for a bunch of years. If we make it in five years, it will probably be less than half the price of what it is today, because we're in that kind of a situation right now. And But somebody still has to make this technology choice now, and then that has to be financed in, 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 in an intelligent way. And then there's a last thing also there, uh, I think. Today, fossil subsidies, indirect and direct, are larger than renewable subsidies. So, th so $7 trillion or something like that globally on fossil and somewhere between five and six mm -hmm. on renewables. So there is a possibility to shift if, if, if there is a real will. So there's, there's a lot of things that, that will affect this and that could make this really speed up. Because I think the transition that we're in for is on the same scale as the original electrification of society or, or mm -hmm. the build out of the trains or all of it. It's like a, <coughs> it's a reindustrialization of, yeah, the, of the whole thing. society. Precisely. So you're saying that this has to be sort of done Part of the responsibility, like commercializing it, that can be done by industry and yep. should be done. But it has to be in synchronization with government action as yes. well. Yeah. Right. Well, I wanted to comment on this Harris corridor thinking, and I liked it very much because as a cargo owner, <coughs> sea transportation is one major part, and that's really important. But uh, cargo seldom stays at the port. At the end of the day, it has to go mm. uh, directly to the customer as well. And we would like to have 
all all participants and all parties included in this uh, corridor. Mm -hmm. So it has to be pre-carriage to the port, it has to be port activities, sea transportation, other port, mm -hmm. and then the final destination as well, the last leg. So all these have to be uh, fossil free and uh, it's it's step by step we are getting there. But at the moment, if we want to have a fossil free transportation from Finland to let's say Italy, so or, or Germany via 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 Europe, so it will be really really difficult to arrange that. Riku, but before I give you the word, could you sort of when you comment also maybe perhaps a bit sort of that off the cuff, how on earth do we get this coordination between government and uh, industry? initiatives. But please, you, you, your comment first. Yeah, coming back to kind of <clears throat> the jump towards the fossil free future, it happens gradually. It's a disruption at the same time. We need to make quick decisions for gradual improvement. Mm. So if we can add now, let's say, rotor sales and save 10% of the fuel, and now the fuel costs $1, mm. dollar, in the future it's maybe $3, so mm. we save much more money in the future by adding these things already digital tools for optimizing the routes and digitalization and mm -hmm. automation for ports <coughs> operations and uh, improved logistics. So all that multiplies in the future mm -hmm. its effect. So we also need to do these smaller things. And we are happy to see a lot of Finnish companies developing all these pieces to the puzzle. It's not only about the fuel, mm -hmm. although that's the big disruption, but still there's so much more to do also. Sounds mm -hmm. like you see that you're saying that, that there are sort of that there are significant opportunities, as you can say. I mean, yes, that, there are. That uh, sort of an energy saving technology becomes much more valuable yes. when the fuel becomes more expensive. Yes, and if I may add there that now we are talking about green corridors, we should also talk about greenish corridors and mm -hmm. greener corridors compared mm -hmm. to current situation. Yeah. So it's <coughs> moving towards that direction. Mika? Yeah, a couple of things. This, this corridor thinking is, is, of course, good for all, all of us here because we, we are representing this type of industry where, where we are transporting goods from point to point, especially the, the, the marine, the, the sea, sea transport part of it. And, and in a way, in, in that type of an environment, it's easier to, to, to find the solutions, the technical solutions, because you, you, you can build your infrastructure, make the, the huge investments. But at the same time, we need to, need to see that in general, the marine industry shipping is, as, as I said earlier, very conservative. You look at the current order book of ships globally, still more than 90% are ordered with, uh, with heavy fuel oil as the fuel. So, and they will be there for the next 30 years. This means that we don't only talk about new built vessels here. And, and here I would like to thank Business Finland for, for being being supportive for, for different types of uh, re research programs that we are doing actually together uh, also on existing vessels mm -hmm. so that we can convert existing vessels in, into into more sort of environmental environmentally friendly or or less emitting vessels so that, that's also an important <coughs> issue in this discussion Thank you. Yeah, I was just, uh, Rigo mentioned earlier that it's important to have these platforms where companies can get together and build the projects. Uh, and, and I have to say that that is happening more and more. Uh, just we have been sharing uh, with Harri a, a joint project where we, where we started to calculate and uh, report the emissions and find out what they really in, in real world are. And these sort of things, and, and we can see that this is happening much more at, at the moment. Porto Manessa say being heavily uh, together doing investigations in Rahe, well, how to how to produce hydrogen and so forth and so forth. So this is going further. Mm -hmm. Happy to see that. Somehow I have a feeling that industry is uh, also uh, how would I put it deeply uh, committed to this yeah. target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but industry is, but the legislation. Uh, running after, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, yeah. In, in a, in it's a, the politicians. <laughs> 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 and but that's I, my personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is your own <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, in a way, um, what you're saying is that this has to be done together, and it can be done together. But um, so then comes the question that, uh, on the one hand, from, uh, from especially Mika and Stefan's point of view, that. Uh, how can we scale it? How, how are we going to spread the good word? But also, in a way, from uh, to, then to Harri and Minna, that w how would Viking Line benefit if if we could sort of create more uh, 
of these corridors because there are other ships that could shift to re biogas and there are ships that could be converted to, for example, methanol and so on. So first, if you take Mika and Staffan, how, how should we go about and then you guys? Yeah, I, I think I said all, already earlier, the technology technology exists. So, so that is not the, the issue at the moment. The issue, as we have said, it, it, it's the sort of working together to make this happen. Mm. So, so we, we just basically have to agree that this is what we want to do. And that it is quite apparent that this is what everybody wants to do. So one we, corridor at a time. One corridor at a time. And, and Stefan, you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's a question of partnering mm -hmm. rather than thinking customer supplier mm -hmm. in many cases. Mm -hmm. um, joint investments, mm -hmm. uh, working together to build something. And here I would say, being Swedish myself, that there is a little difference, I can say after 23 years in, in Fortum, um, that in Sweden we think a lot. And then when we've all decided, we work very fast. In Finland, you do more faster, and, and, and yeah, um, which later. I think in this case actually yeah. could be a benefit yeah. for the Finnish way of doing things. Mm. Harry, I mean, uh, would Viking Line, would you guys benefit if there were sort of other similar corridors popping up? Preferably not on your routes, of course, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not in Finland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. No, well, uh, of course. Uh, we have to see it from the little bit of from the bird's eye view, yeah. the whole import-export industry. Mm -hmm. Finland needs something new. Finland needs to be more than some, somebody else because we have the 1,000, 1,500 kilometers uh, extra to transport the cargo mm -hmm. to export or import industry. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're more environmental friendly than our competitors, we will benefit the Finnish import and export industry. Uh, we cannot get Finland closer to, uh, to Europe, to continental Europe, mm. but we can be more environmental friendly. And more of these inventions uh, will come around the environmental friendly transport. Of course, it strengthens even our brand and our uh, company and our way of doing business. If we are the first one, well, we are the first ones at the moment in Finland, so be it, it's nice, mm -hmm. but we have to go further. We, have, we want to be next one, first one in a next generation change as well. What it will be, we'll, we'll see. Minna, am I right to think that from your perspective, <coughs> it, I mean, it would be a good thing if, there was, if the demand for traveling sustainable was so great, so it was, it was, it was grown, and it's a, sort of a, it's a minor issue then that, uh, let's, say, let's say for example that, Finns, instead of flying to the Alps, they go ski. They go take your boat. They go skiing in Sweden and Norway, and some of them go on your boat, and some might go on the Vasa Umaja line. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because demand uh, is yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that, mm, um, well, the, the more there is, uh, I, I think it's it's the, you know the, the the awareness is the thing that that change the behavior, you know. Mm. Yeah, the mo more you, you start to, you know, think about things, the more you, or the less you think about probably the money, because, mm. because we are in the very price-sensitive business in the passenger side, of course, also on the, on the cargo side, but, but I'm, I'm thinking about the passenger side. And um, you mentioned yourself that, that the, the, the extra fee was four euros, and if you take a cruise from Helsing, uh, from uh, Turku to, to uh, Stockholm and come back, a uh, 22-hour cruise, it's about five euros, the, the extra cost for the beer fuel. Uh, for some passengers, it might be just too much. Mm. Uh, for us, probably, it sounds a little bit you know, um, peculiar that five euros can be, it can be a lot. But when we are in the, com uh, in the, in the uh, price-sensitive business and, and you compare you know, vessel on a vessel, and, and the other is five euros more expensive than the other. Uh, if you don't have this pressure that, okay, I, I have to think about the environment, I have to think about my friends who, mm. who might think that, you know, that, that it's not a sensible way of, of traveling, then you might just choose the, the more, the cheaper alternative. 
mm. which is always a, a bad choice. And of course, the economical situation at the moment and, and so on, so we know that, that people are getting more conscious about their, their spending and, and so on. But five euros is, you know, for those people who want to travel, I think it's, it's small enough money that you can, you can pay that extra and have kind of a good conscious about, about your travel because mm. that, that's, that's the thing that you, you, you've done your, your job and, 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 mm. and you, you, you can travel with, with a good, good conscious. Thank you. Five euros per trailer extra, and you have a deal. <laughs> 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 we, we can sign it now. I, 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 I stop that uh, Actually, I would like to turn to the audience if there are any questions there. There's a question. If there's a microphone as well, I suppose. Hopefully, you're not recording this because <laughs> he, will come, he will come back with this. <laughs> uh, frankly, I think I think they, we're on. If, they're filming he, it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. You hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm Michael Lind from uh, Research Institute of Sweden, and um, I'm extremely fascinating. I, I have been working uh, a bit with Mika uh, on uh, on the um, Vasa Line uh, ferry and that that construction, and um, I think this idea about partnership is extremely good uh, because I mean we will never reach the the Paris Agreement if we are. Um, doing what we are doing, if you take this from a global perspective. A question to Mika. Um, this whole idea about, uh, in the case of developing Vasa Line, was basically uh, upon that you stepping in together with Wärtsilä, together with Quark and Ports. It's, it's a full chain of actors that are really engaged in doing that. Um, we have the electricity uh, going in and out of the port, and we have the need for supply of very fossil-free fuel in between the two uh, areas, so to say. Uh, I know that uh, UMU is working on heavily to, to get uh, access to such fuel, uh, and Versailles is sitting there and, and analyzing the engines, and uh, we have a situation where we see that uh, the, the new ship, the cleanest ship in the world, is extremely um, clean, so to say. One of the cleanest ship designs in the world. You bring uh, the guys, um, some of your partners, down to Tasmania and build a new ship, right? Yep. So, um, and then you now said that uh, we will um, build up on locally produced fuel. And if you think about it now, we have a bunch of ships that normally is not staying with the same owner for the whole lifetime. It needs to be brought to somewhere else, uh, probably because it will re be reselled. How do you cope with the challenge that, and, and the business model, or how we could talk about it, uh, for let's say that your ship in 30 years, Vos, uh, the Vasa Line ship will end up in, it's not your ship of course, but will end up in Africa. Well, yeah, th thanks for the question and, and maybe a bit, bit of background there. Yes, this, this Aurora Botnia uh, Vasa Line vessel, which is trafficking between Vasa and Umeå, is, is a perfect example of a cooperation. Took quite a long time to, to, to design the vessel. Actually, it is designed for specifically for that route. And, and there is both the cities of, of Vasa and Umeå involved in the, in the business. Then we have Wärtsilä with, with their uh, technology center in Vasa. Actually, one of the engines on board is a lab engine. So they, they are still developing the engine itself and the environment where it works. And there is also academia otherwise involved. We have uh, Aalto University. We actually installed sensors on the hull of the vessel to, to measure the, the, the influence of, of winter navigation on the hull of the vessel. We, we have, we hopefully, hopefully in the future, we will have years of data on how to then design the future vessels for, for similar routes. But the question, which is, of course, uh, vital in, in the shipping industry, is what to do with the aging ships. And, and earlier it has been... Well, not easy, but uh, easier to to find uh, a buyer for for your your vessel, which is going to be replaced somewhere else in the world. And let's let's hope and and work towards that that there will be also a market in the future, so that the infrastructure where where it will land eventually is available at that time, when when 30 years or 25 years from now, when when the ship is sold. Uh, 
that it would be available and, and, and I hope we can all work towards that. But as I said, this was a, a, a very good example of, of, and also Business Finland was involved there in, in the in the pre-study phases and also there was a, a, a large study on how to get biofuel <coughs> from, from Ostrobotnian area from both sides of the quark and, and, and that was really a and, and the vessel, I, I recommend all of you to <laughs> not only use Viking land, but, but <laughs> when you travel a bit northern route, use that one. This is a beautiful vessel. Very cool. If I may jump in here, so you asked about the regulation and regulators and polit people laughed about politicians. So <laughs> <laughs> that side of the equation takes a long time. If mm -hmm. we look at the International Maritime Organization, 170 plus countries involved, mm -hmm. they have all have to agree. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit longer than us agreeing on concrete project between Stockholm and Turku or the Vasa, Vasa line mm -hmm. route. So let's focus on doing things because we can do things. We have good examples here. Viking line is now working on developing greenish, almost green route and same thing for Vasa Umaya. So yeah. let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and make it future proof, and perhaps, so that I mean, we can kind I mean, of jump. I mean, yes, there is the IMO, yeah, and the, uh, there is the IMO, of course. But then again, I mean, a lot of things can be done on EU level are, yep. are being done, yep. and uh, I mean, and there are maritime regulations coming. There is transport emission regulation being developed. There is uh, sustainability related. So, what you're saying that basically things can be done. We don't have to wait for the regulations. We to be don't perfect. have to wait, and they will come there and we have lots of regulation in place it's mm. just really complex <laughs> to okay. use it for your risk management <laughs> yeah uh, imo yeah we know we know the challenges with imo and also with the european union but we also need to think about locally in finland mm -hmm. the regulations uh, calling finnish ports it should be environmental friendly supporting uh, calls and not giving uh, yeah, penalty fees or not uh, not having a different taxes on the calls on the Finnish port if you have a new state-of-the-art environmental friendly vessel or if you don't have it, you, you should have it in line. You have to benefit mm -hmm. somehow by calling an uh, environmental friendly vessel at the Finnish port. And uh, Turku Stockholm route vessels, which we have in, invested totally in two vessels in 10 years time, 450 million roughly, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot miss invest on that heavily mm. it's it's the question of life for the company we need to be certain we need to be so certain as possible when we go to the next generation vessel next generation uh carrier uh what what fuel can mm. be used or needs to be used that's why the legislation is a key issue if we choose a and then the legislation says that you only can use c Mm -hmm. Then we missed it, and we invested a few hundred millions, and Precisely. that's that's a big mm -hmm. gamble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of and, course. And as, that's as the well. same thing yeah. as as yeah. using yeah. which carbon you choose yeah. to use. I mean, yeah. potentially carbon, if we stop using fossil, will actually be a scarce resource. And I think that's something we need to think about in society. What will happen because yeah. most carbon that can be captured and reused is probably in 30 years time or so going to have to be used if we want to be able to continue sure. mm -hmm. in the same kind of, at least same kind of life standards that we have mm -hmm. at the moment. We, we are extremely dependent on carbon in the society today. Precisely. We really need to think of the entire yes. chain and including also because I th what Harry mentioned is about port fees. I mean, they are one element here, but I think that's a good ex example of a kind of hidden, there can mm. be hidden fossil subsidies, as you said, uh, Stefan. Yeah. Uh, some are explicit, but some are sort of hidden because they are just forgotten there in the, in the, in the system. Uh, back, back on this, this cooperation, I think, I mean, thinking a bit further, Further ahead, what we have what we have seen and what we have discussed a lot in these uh, development project uh, workshops is that this could actually be uh, the, the business model as such could also be an export product for for, for the mm -hmm. joint industries. Yeah, absolutely. But there again, we need we need the government to to work with us because then that that could be the sort of call it the Finnish model or a Baltic model, mm -hmm. which we could 
export to other parts of the world where you, for example, are not, not competing with any, any shipping line. And, mm. and that could be a, a sort of driver also for further, further cooperation within the industry here in Finland, supported naturally by, by the ministry. Okay, so, so, I mean, so you're saying that we could ex export the entire concept, a platform. The, the, the business model. Yeah. Mm. And the technology. Yeah, I mean, that, that includes then the, how the legislation rules safety issues, inf infrastructure building the vessels. Naturally, we would like to do so those. You, it's but like going, so you could, you could go to some, let's say, Mediterranean country and, and tell them, okay, tell the companies, tell the cargo owners that this is how you price, this is sort of pricing, this is how you As an do example, the cost sharing, yeah. and also yeah. maybe to ports and authorities that this is how it should be regulated. A comprehensive package. Yeah, these are the investments you need to look at and, and what is available locally. One thing I think also regarding the Nordics and what we can export, if, if we look at up until these just the last year or so, the maps on projects regarding um, regarding power to X projects, as it's called, if you wasn't so, they stopped somewhere in, in, in northern Estonia or maybe in the best case, southern Finland. But usually Finland and most parts of Sweden and Norway aren't even a part of the discussion globally because we have not been communicating what we're up to, what we're doing and the benefits we have and so on. So it's also a question of us sort of saying, hey, we're here, we have... Potentially a lot of uh, potentially a lot of clean and and hopefully inexpensive electricity that can be used because it's electricity that will sort of be the base mm. driver for a lot of this, in, in a sense, um, and that somehow we need to 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 lift this and, and shout mm. out yeah. also. So it's it's also a question of us, and that will help us get financing, private financing also into these things, uh, so that we won't stand so much alone in a mm. sense also. Mina. Yeah, I participated last week. Uh, Business Finland organized a Team Finland Day, and I met uh, some of the ambassadors uh, working in Europe and also um, uh, Asia, and and it was quite surprising also that uh, ambassadors from uh, Lithuania, Latvia, they said, or oh, Hungary as well. They said that okay, the consumers are not at all interested in the in the sustainable travel, that it's not an issue at all. So it's only the the matter of price. So if you are the cheaper than the others, so then then they just choose your vessel. And it was it was you know they are in the same European Union and they have the same facts and and figures than we do, and, and they are kind of kind of a close by. Uh, we're not talking about uh, Cambodia or, or, or any Asian <coughs> poor countries. We're talking about European countries. And the consumer awareness is, is not there. So that's why I said that it's, it's a matter of communication. We need to, be, we, we, we need to you know, shout about this uh, out loud, uh, in fin starting from Finland, of course, because that's, that's where, my, where my resources are. But then, of course, also... Uh, Wider, wider in Europe. Exactly. We have to create the demand. Harry and Eriku. Yeah, about the price. I, I need to explain myself when I said it's extremely expensive to use biofuel. Yes, in, in whole, in general, it is more expensive than the current one. Forgive me not using the steel as an example, <coughs> but, uh, but if you take a consumer cargo coming or going from Finland, uh, when you calculate the ex more, the more cost which using a, a environmental, more environmental friendly uh, fuel, biofuel uh, to transport over sea and on on the on the roadside, how much will it be per per piece in in a, if it's a coffee package or if it's a, a breakfast cereal or if it's a, how many breakfast cereals you can have in a one lorry which is 25 meter long? We're talking about thousands. And then when you divide the extra cost per the package, uh, then we're talking about the marginal, more expensive things. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we consumers have the key mm -hmm. partly to make mm -hmm. a change. When we start buying, if you can see from the package that it's, it's been transported uh, or logistically, 
or produced and produced uh, more environmental friendly and we start using and buying these th things, then it will be uh, more mm. in everyday life and it will grow. The, the, the corridors will be more than just uh, our good start here. Exactly. So, I mean, both when it comes to cargo and travel, we have consumers there yeah. at the end. Yeah. And uh, if I think a bit sort of selfishly as a Finn, as a Nordic citizen, in a way, if, if we could do what Mika says about having the entire business model, which would include this about engaging, creating the demand, we would not only provide the solution to uh, reducing the emissions, we would actually do significant <coughs> business. Yeah. Stuff on you were. Yeah, regarding that, um, I must say that I'm a little bit pessimistic. Unfortunately, also here uh, in in the Nordic countries, which are more progressive in this sense than most countries globally, because, for example, one of our local two stores at home um, has stopped sourcing uh, sustainable meat because people ask for it and then they have to throw it away. Mm. So they buy it and nobody buys it because they say it's too expensive. So, so people want it, but yes. they're then not prepared to pay for it. So I think there, there is, and I think this mm. also goes in industry. Yeah. Industry sometimes asks for, for, for it, but is not prepared to take the extra cost that would be necessary to make it fly because their customers in turn are not prepared to do mm. it. So, so the willingness to pay is a true issue. He, at the he, moment. He was willing to pay. Magnus, I want a quick <laughs> comment on this so that uh, based on this discussion, people might think that, okay, let's, let's, let's make the green transportation and pay for it. But then from industry side, I have to say that uh, Finland is a beautiful country, but the distance is not. Mm. So <laughs> the main market is far away and the competition is really, really, really tough. And uh, Finnish industry is playing roughly... Uh, 12, 13 percent on logistics, whereas the competition in main market yeah. is four to five. So this is what we are dealing. We have to already. We have to be really, really smart uh, to to uh, mm. be successful. And we want to uh, go ahead with these green things, mm. but we we cannot give a carte blanche to everybody. No. Like it can be. It has, no to, matter be, what it the it has to be yeah. business driven. Then, then there is yeah. no sales. Yeah. Yeah. So he has a buy. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but but I think say, there no, it's that's really why important. we have to do it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah, smart, yeah. smart uh, Do it smart, do it together, and be open with what can be done and can't be done. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that f if, if in the worst case we just say, well, sorry, it won't work, and then we stop, or we say there's a gap here, potentially it can be, it can be subsidized mm -hmm. in this, these first cases, or we find ways through creative engineering and good i mean there's a there's so many really great engineers in the, in these in the nordics here we okay. can do a lot of things and minimize costs if we if we work on it but then we have to know the prerequisites mm -hmm. which and i think that communication needs to be more open than it is today i think mm -hmm. One issue that I know that uh, we've been discussing both with you at SSAB and and Vikingland is is that getting a getting a sort of a receipt or some kind of document showing that these were our emissions because you need you need to you need it in order to market your products and of course Viking Line you need you need it and I believe you get it from your fuel supplier. How does does this work today and, and what should, what kind of system should be I mean and similarly in a sense what kind of information reassurance do passengers need in order to know that they, it really is yeah, well, uh, I can start because we haven't done it yet. We'll, we'll do it next week. Uh, <laughs> what we're planning, uh, hopefully it, it uh, works out well. Uh, the subcontractor which is uh, supplying us the, uh, the LBG together with LNG has promised us a certificate, mm -hmm. uh, a proof of delivery, yeah. uh, which then we have possibility of uh, copying and uh, informing our client, which then uh, is, uh, is a subcontractor to hopefully to SSAB, and that's how we doing mm -hmm. it. Uh, if somebody wants to see it uh, personally live to be fueled the vessel, yeah, that's probably can be done as well. But I hope the proof of delivery, because we will be monitored. The supplier who supplies us the LNG and LBG is monitored already. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they are certified. 
uh, and the delivery comes and we get the approval of it. So we cannot do anything, uh, anything, uh, anything not. Uh, we cannot do something that we are not, uh, not telling. Mm. So what, we, what we're doing, we're telling. And that's what we give the, the proof of delivery and the certificate of. The, and where does it come from? It's ex extremely important for some of clients to know where does the LBG come from. Mm -hmm. In uh, geographically, you mean? geographically, yes. Can and, you uh, explain a bit more on that? Yeah, well, uh, people ask for it. They, oh. I already know that some of clients. Yeah, we want to know the origin of the LBG, geographically, and hopefully also, yeah, uh, what kind of biomass is, is uh, has been used to produce. <clears throat> And that's what we have to do. And that's what our sub, uh, subcontractor has promised us, uh, uh, informing us about. Some products are already, you know, I have to say that um, some product groups are done by biodiesel, even the uh, sea, tra sea transportation part. And I can confirm it's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the whole chain has been certified by an outside uh, uh, certificate mm -hmm. agent. And then this is enough then for our customers as well as long as we follow the protocol according to certification. So mm -hmm. it's going correctly. Yeah, for, for the vessels as well, there are, there are audits and certificates you need for, 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 the, for the operation. So not only for the construction, but when, when you operate the vessel, of oh, course you, oh. you, you have quite a lot of sure. paperwork to do to, to exactly. prove that what you have, which kind of yeah. fuels and mm. how yeah, much. Uh, and unfortunately so for the, the private, Private consumer, we can't give a certificate that that you know this this much this day has been. They have to been, trust you. Yeah, they have to trust us, and then of course we give out the environmental reports uh, annually. So so there there has there is the the, the reporting then then uh, for the consumer side. But if 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 consumers asked for it, I mean, would it be possible to have some, for example, on? A on diploma, the receipt or something. A diploma. The, yeah. They get the re probably you got also a, yeah. a receipt that you have paid for years for for yeah. fuel, fuel. So, um, but then when that money has been used in our vessels, yeah. um, I don't know. Maybe I, I suppose the, the the diploma would then cost us a little bit more than this four euros to to produce, but. Well, I we, mean, we, we yeah, haven't yeah. we haven't um, mm -hmm. we haven't decided yet, but but mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 plan is that that mm -hmm. it, it is the annual uh, environment report that that shows us or okay. shows then the consumers uh, that that how much uh, how much has it has been used, how much we have got uh, okay. uh, the fees, and how much how much we have, have used for the the beer gas and when, and for which mm -hmm. vessels, of course. Harry, uh, you. Are what you just said about that con uh, customers are asking about where the fuel comes from actually raised um, a thought that I've been having here now that when we talk about sustainability, and I mean, now we've been talking about reducing emissions a lot, but actually there's, I mean, it all goes, comes to the, it sort of relates to the question of sustainable travel. And so, I mean, one thing about renewable fuels is that uh, contrary to, most fossil fuels, if we just count in volumes, are um, produced in, or in, quite often produced in countries that are, let's say, just less democratic. And uh, so if we skip Norway, then it's basically mostly in a way. Um, do you think this could be turned into a competitive advantage, part of marketing and communication that sort of by traveling, using this fuel, not only are you reducing emissions, you're actually not funding some unnamed dictatorship uh, attacking its neighboring country. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a, yeah, it's it's a new idea. We haven't thought it really that way because we're not we're not buying anything from from that side of the of the Baltic Sea. Uh, what would be very optimal, which we have talked about, it that uh, that we do have some uh, circle economy ideas in for the future hmm. some of the food stuff which is not consumed uh, 100 percent on board we already use that to to provide some buyer uh, uh, buyer gas for the for the transport uh, and the bus traffic in 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 sweden hmm. we could hopefully in the longer run 
find a way to use that as our own fuel mm -hmm. in one day. But currently, when we buying the LBG, is not produced locally. Mm -hmm. It comes from the European origin most likely continental Europe or southern Scandinavian uh, places. Uh, but of course, we're starting, we're developing, we want to be first, we want to be environmental friendly. We're getting there, but we have to start from somewhere. I was going to ask, Heike, I mean, if Viking Line can sort of produce this information about sort of more than just emissions, really sort of on the, let's say, footprint, handprint, can you utilize that kind of information in your yeah, marketing? We, yeah, we can. And uh, some of our customers are really, really asking for it if, if they want to pay a small premium also for transport or we choose to do so. And uh, this is really good uh, beginning. I'm happy to hear that it's uh, starting next week. And I'm, I'm very sure that we'll look into that deeply. Pico. Yeah, actually, I'd like to ask other panelists here about sustainability in general. So sustainability is much more than carbon footprint or handprint. So when we look at ESGs like environmental, social and governance, sustainability topics and such. Uh, for example, for me personally, when I'm dealing with maritime and ports activities of ours, we focus mainly on the carbon footprint and handprint right now because that's the burning, burning platform. At the same time, we try to keep other ESGs in the picture because those have to be handled also and other emissions than carbon. Yeah. So how do you look at the big picture of sustainability and is the carbon now 98% of the focus or how would you define it? Well, if I started a lot, of course, a lot has been done during the last couple of decades to, to reduce the emissions other than the carbon emissions. So, I mean, the, the legislation has been brought forward and, and the, the shipping industry has acted responsibly on, on this. And of course, we, we still need to continue the, the development when we're talking about chips, development of the efficiency. So, so that to reduce in general the energy consumption. So that, that needs to be kept in mind definitely as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely for us, we have uh, officially communicated targets on biodiversity, for example. Uh, of course, being a large hy hydropower producer, biodiversity is, is a serious issue for us and has been for a long time. Um, which is, I mean, it's costly to work with. We have to do it. Um, so we have targets on that. We have, of course, not only our own carbon footprint, but also our scope three. And so, so whatever we cause is, is in our targets also. And then the social responsibility, definitely so. So I would say that, I mean, I, I, was, I was leading a, already 21 years ago a, a social sustainability network in, in within the company. So it's, we've been thinking about these things for quite a while, actually, in the company. In our company, so all greenhouse gases are targeted in our own production. And then scope three, actually science-based scope three targets will be will be published now first quarter 2024. Mm. This is what uh, we are working on that at the moment. And then there's uh, being a Swedish company as well as Finnish. <laughs> so the social uh, responsibility is uh, enormously important in the company. Mm. Yeah, uh, please, uh, fill, <laughs> please fill in. But, uh, but we, we, uh, we started the environmental work already. Yeah, when we started the business, I would say. but. Uh, as, as far as I re, re, can recall, as my 80s, we started, we had the shore power. We've been washing the, the we, we have not used any toxic uh, paint on the uh, bottom uh, painting on the vessels. We've been brushing the vessels. It's an ongoing business uh, to be more environmental friendly all the time. And now we come the state where we are from LNG to LBG, what will be next. Everything is, imp uh, is important for us when it comes to the environmental friendliness and especially to take care of the Baltic Sea. Today is the Baltic Sea Day, uh, which, which we should highlight that the Baltic Sea is extremely important. It's for us and it's for all of us uh, in Finland and in Sweden. Uh, to take care of the, the Baltic Sea, uh, everything 
record uh, regarding the the environment is is important now yes now we are talking about the co2 emissions it's because our clients demand and that's where where, where we're coming from and uh, but you're also creating that demand yeah, natu yeah natu about. naturally but of course we have the the food stuff all mm. the material used mm. on the vessels uh, uh, everything is taken uh, into consideration. Mm. Please uh, feel free. Yeah, to yeah. Well, uh, yeah. we are talking about logistics, but we are also a service company. We, the, the clients are coming to to buy their experiences, and and that's why our staff is really deep in, important for us, because they are the ones that, who who create the the experience for our clients, and together with our clients, we we then improve our our. Um, services and also also the pr product that they are then in the future buying buying so so it's kind of a circle that we 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 need our clients and our staff uh serve them and 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 so on so so the social responsibility has is really important for us and and as, of <coughs> course we have stuff uh, from all over the world and 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 then of course the land organization and and the vessel organization are, are Quite different or separate, but but still, you know, working together to, 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 to with each other to create the best possible experience for the clients. So, so the social responsibility is really important for us as well. Magnus, I have yeah. a comment. So, uh, we have some over hundred logistics service providers that we cooperate with, and uh, we made a survey uh, amongst them that how do how do how do they what their capabilities are regarding this emission. Uh, getting rid of emissions uh, and and uh, how how they can report them and and what the status is in this and what plans are plans are in the future and uh, I'm happy to say that in Finland uh, most of the companies have uh, good standards way of working plans to reduce but then there were some uh, that said that this doesn't concern us at all and now with them we have uh, some difficulty to find to find a. Mm room for cooperation in the future. That's uh, quite shocking, actually. That's shocking. It's, it's good to hear that the majority... But, uh, <laughs> Thank but you. Now, actually, uh, actually yeah. in tenders, so we are having this as a decision criteria. That okay. must be some mm. kind of a... Yeah. That's good to hear. But I think if... if Last we, comments, sir, Stefan. If we go to the biosphere, uh, just stick to that for a short while, I think one thing that we all have realized much more, it's much more clarity just these last few years, which I think the researchers probably knew mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40 years ago is how everything interacts. Mm. I mean, that, that climate change is not isolated from biodiversity and, and um, sound pollution is not isolated either from and any of these. So they're all sort of in, in... And that was one thing I really reacted to now getting back to Viking Line there is that how silent Viking Glory was when I came here this morning. Mm. How, how extremely silent compared to older ships. Uh, she is, mm. yeah. Mm. Yeah. No. We had a question out in the audience, Hendrik. I hope it's not ours. Who was, was <laughs> asking the question? <laughs> then we're no problem. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Hendrik Ringbom. I'm a maritime law professor here at, at Obo Academy. Um, this is very interesting discussion, but but I, I feel that there is an elephant in the room uh, in a way which which uh, which comes from the regulatory side. Um, when we talk about the, the um, greening of, of, of maritime transport, of course, we, the main tool that has been developed for the purpose uh, is the European Emission Trading Scheme and the inclusion of shipping into that system as from next year, which in a way is supposed to deal with many of these problems and, and, and challenges that you, you have been talking about. Now. However, there, there in, if we're talking about this particular corridor now, half of those emissions are not going to be included if we are to believe the, the, the government program. Mm. I know Viking Line and, and other companies have been uh, lobbying hard to get an exemption from all trade between the Finnish mainland and Holland, which is half or more than half if we talk about Helsinki. Um, Basically, not to pay any 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 carbon charges for for that route, mm -hmm. and and in view of this, I, I wonder if the customers are so um, green and and conscious of carbon footprints and 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 uh, isn't there a risk that this type of 
policy from, from your side or, or the other companies as well, and from the politicians, may backfire in seeing, looking as if you, you, you will not take this uh, green challenge seriously if, if there is a chance to, to use an exemption, which, by the way, was designed for a completely different type of purpose. That exemption was designed for, for, for the Greek islands, etc. So are, are you saying that it's a kind of a subsidy for using fossil fuels? Yes. So it would take away competitive advantage from biofuels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're not selling half halfway trips. We're selling one leg between uh, Finland and Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to have, use the biofuel, you have to pay for the entire trip, exactly. uh, regardless of the ETS uh, coming in force next year. And yes, there will be some uh, some. Uh, yeah, it will be a little cheaper in the beginning for the ETS uh, fees. For for some over uh, some period of time, mm -hmm. but it's a short term in a longer term uh, mm -hmm. development. But uh, yeah, it's it can be seen as a subsidiary for the fossil, fossil fuel. fuel. But uh, I'm convinced that the clients are uh, wise enough to choose the correct uh, fuel type for their transport. Precisely. So it's not up, it's not just government regulation. It's also about sort of mm. it really is yeah, about it is, yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. I'm, industry I'm, and yeah. consumers at the end. Of yes, the, I, 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 to, I, I was telling to some of the colleagues the other day that I see this change from LNG to LBG a more drastic uh, change for our company than when we started using LNG. LBG is a big step for us. And I, I think that, that, that actually I, sums it up yeah. very nicely and. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank the panelists very much and, of course, also the audience here. So, And uh, for those continuing to the conference on Green Corridors, there's a bus waiting outside. And we're going, we'll be going for lunch at Hamburg Bus, and that's where we also continue for the conference. And those who are going by car, I suggest that you put your car in the, in the Tori Park, because there you can get easily to the hotel. Thank you. 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 Thank you.